Hey, welcome back to our MVC application. We're doing CRUD operations on a database. Now, we're going to take the data that you see here and transform it into a SQL statement that we can use in our application. So in the previous video, we imported all of this data here. So we should have some 350 lines to pick from, 323 lines specifically. And we're going to implement this in the controller. So instead of adding gadgets here one at a time, we're going to replace this with a data access object that will query the database. So just to be sure that I'm doing this right, I'm going to delete the uh, four lines that are there. And then I'm going to add some code here. So the new class that I'm going to create is called the Gadget DAO. So I'll just try to instantiate one of those right here. And you can see that I'll have an error that says this doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead and show potential fixes. And it says here one of the ideas is to generate the class Gadget DAO in a new file. So I'll choose that one. And where does it show up here? It shows up in the controller right here. So it's not really where I want it to be. So let's make a new folder and let's call it data. Once I have the data folder, I'm going to drag the DAO object down into the data folder and say, yes, I want to go there. So you would think that it would just automatically update your namespace. It does not correctly. So let's just change this. So then the namespace should be called uh, bondgadgetcollection.data. So it's in the right folder. All right, so what is this thing going to do? So this one class, the DAO, or data access object, is going to do all of the operations related to the database. So it'll get all of the gadgets. It will create a new one. It will delete one. It'll get one. It'll search. And if there's anything else, I forgot. So that's what we're going to code out here in the next few videos. So the first method that this class will do will be to get all of the items from the database. So the return type of this method is a list of gadget model, and we can name it anything we want, but I think fetch all seems like a good name. Now you can see that some things need to be imported, so let's go and choose the fixes, and we're going to import or use the models folder, and let's see if that fixes everything. It does not, so let's go look at the list, and it says here we need to use collections.generic, so list is a collection, so we better use collections as well. Okay, so now we've got a problem that says uh, your, uh, doesn't, your item doesn't return a value. So we're going to have to code this in here and make it happen. So I'm going to lay out some code here that will tell us where we're going to do uh, the work here for this method. So we're going to have to first of all create a return item. So I'm going to call it a list of type gadget model and it will be called return list and we'll initiate it as a blank or empty list. And then I'll put a comment here to say we're going to access the database. There'll be a lot of code here. And then finally at the end, before we forget, we're going to return the list. So in every operation in my DAO, I need to connect to the database. And there's a special string that will give us permission to the database. It's called your connection string. So I'm going to define it up at the top here and then use it in every one of the methods below. Now where do I get this string here? So I've got this prepared area, so I need to fill it in. So to get the property for this guy, I'm going to right click on my database and choose properties. And you can see the properties window appears over here. And then down lower, you're gonna find something called the connection string. There it is. So I'm gonna double click, right click and copy it. And then I can put it right in between the quotation marks with a paste. And so this here says we're going to connect to the local database. We're going to connect to this uh, database and it talks about some timeouts and some other things that are going on. So I don't really need to know all the details there. I just know that this string is required if I want to connect to it. So now I'm going to open up a, a new code block here. I'm going to use a statement called using. And so this is often used with a connection on the database because we're going to specify the connection inside of the parentheses. And as soon as we get to the end of the block, the database connection will automatically close. So that's what a good use is for using. So inside the parentheses, we need to use the statement for connections. It's called SQL Connection. So capital S, capital C. It doesn't automatically recognize it, so we're going to have to import something. But we're going to say that the connection, the variable name, 
is equal to a new instance of the SQL connection. And we must provide as a parameter the connection string that we defined up higher in the program. The next thing we're going to do is create the actual SQL query. So this is just a normal string. And I'm going to define it now as a SQL select. So select star from dbo.gadgets. And so the square brackets, I believe, are optional. You can have them on each section, or as you can see here, I'm going to leave them out. But that's the most simple select statement that we'll create here, so we'll start with this one first. The next step in the process is to create an object called the SQL command. So the type SQL command, it, we'll just name it as the word command. And we'll create a new instance of it, and it requires two parameters. The first is the SQL query string. And then the second is the connection to the database. So put those two together and you have a command. So now we have the command defined. Let's go ahead and open the connection. So let's type in the word connection dot open. And that's a method that'll just say, hey, the connection to the database is now active. Now let's see, let's do the command and we're going to put in dot execute and we want to choose an execute reader. So this says we're going to do reading, which is the select statement. So that means it's read-only access to the database. Now we want to save those results somewhere. So the uh, thing that you save them to is called a SQL data reader. So we'll type in SQL data reader and let's just name it reader. So the next thing we want to check is to see if we got anything back. So the statement is if reader dot has rows, if that is true, then we know we can go ahead and loop through the list and then put it onto our page. So now we've finally gotten to the point where we do the work. We're going to make a for loop to say while read. So that means while there's another row to read. Every time there's a row to read, we're going to create a new object and then add that to the list that will be returned. So after we get the new object created, we're going to assign its properties. The first property that will come out of the database is the ID number. And so to get that ID number, we're going to say reader dot, and then the property of get32 or get int32 corresponds to an integer. And so that is also at column zero. So that's where this uh, parameter comes from, reader dot get32 int, um, and then zero. So now we've got ourselves the rest of the columns to worry about. So the next column is called name, and we'll get that from the reader as well. This comes from column one. This time, it's of type string. Description, of course, follows the same way. Description is also a string, and it is in column two. Uh, appears in is in column three. It's a string, and the last one is get with this author or with this actor, and that is also a string, and this one is column four. Finally, we get to the last uh, step here. We have created a new gadget from the database properties, and we can add it to the list. Remember, the list that we created is called return list. And then finally, the last statement in our phrase, or in our method here, is to return it. So the fetch all properties should all be working now. Let's go back to the controller, and let's modify our code. So I'm gonna switch the gadgets controller, and let's see if we can make this final thing work. So. What's wrong here? Gadgets DAO doesn't work anymore. Oh, we changed the namespace. So let's see if we can fix that. So let's go to show potential fixes and we're going to get this from gadgetcollection.data. Okay, so that one seems to work now. So now my return list is going to be um, uh, a new list. So it's gonna be gadgets is the name of the list. And instead of creating them in hard-coded, we can go to the uh, values from the DAO. So let's type in gadgets.dao and there is a method called fetch all. So if this works like it's designed, it will go to the database, fetch all of them, and assign them to gadgets. So gadgets is a type, uh, a list of type gadget model. And then it'll return to the index and hopefully show them all. Cross your fingers and see if this works. All right, so the application's up and running. Let's type in a forward slash and gadgets and see what comes out. And sure enough, the index page starts. And this time, instead of having a few of those items in the database that were hard coded, we can see all 325 of them. So this seems to be successful. Now, if I try details or anything like that, the links aren't quite there yet, but those are coming in future videos. So we've got ourselves a list.
So just to review what we've made here, we have a connection string that we got from the properties of the database. We created one method called fetchAll, and inside of there we have a basic SQL statement that says get everything. And then we run through a looper called reader, and we read each of those, and then we um, add them to a list, return the list. Remember the return type of this thing is a list of type gadget model. And so we replaced our hard-coded values with one that comes from the database. So how would you remember how to do this? Do you have to memorize all these statements? Absolutely not. You can just go ahead and look them up into references or look back to previous projects that you've created. But the basic idea is the same for all SQL items. You have to open the database, provide a connection string, run a SQL statement, do a loop, and then return something. So that is a pretty typical uh, pattern that you'll find in universal database um, programming. So in the next step, we're going to show how to show exactly one item from the database instead of the entire list. So we'll do that next.